Welcome back to the Visitor Analytics course about uh, web analytics and SEO. Before we begin, we can split the subject of SEO into four main branches. Technical SEO, which includes all aspects of website functionality. Optimized content, which refers to text, meta text, and other similar things that refer to content in general. Authority building for the website, as well as rankings based on user interaction signals. Technical SEO has to do with the functionality of a website. The first precondition for good ranking is that the site works properly. Of course, nobody will rank high a website that does not load properly, shows errors, or broken links. And the first technical element we are going to look at is load speed. Slow loading websites lead to unhappy users. This in turn leads to SEO problems, as search engines won't rank high a site that people abandon because of it being slow. If it takes more than three seconds to load, especially on mobile devices, then you have a problem. There are several tools to measure speed and find what is slowing down a website. One of them is the one displayed here, GT Metrics. See here the general speed score and loading time. Below there is a list of issues. Those in green don't require attention. Those in red and dark orange are things that are slowing you down. This part can get a little technical and some things may not be under your control but there are a few things you can do to improve speed regardless of the type of website. First one, keep image size as low as possible. Smaller images load faster. Although in some cases you do need larger images, don't waste precious kilobytes and seconds by using unnecessarily large images. In this example, this picture is displayed at a maximum width of 400 or 500 pixels on my website, even on wider screens. This is simply the space we have for it in our design and we don't want it to be displayed any bigger. Then you don't need an image that is natively 1200 pixels wide, which is larger, slower to load and needs to be resized by the browser every time the page loads. So for most images, you can keep the size down and you will gain extra speed. But be careful on cover images and bigger images in your design. Don't resize them if they will be displayed in larger size. This will decrease their quality. Then you should limit the number of fonts you use on a page. Each font loads an external resource which slows down the website. Using fewer fonts will also make things more visually coherent, which is not really the case in the picture example as you can see. Use videos only below the fold. Above the fold is the first section of the page that your visitors see. It's also the first one to load, so you need to keep it clean. If you have a large video right on top of the page, it will lead to slower loading times and less user satisfaction. However, if it's further down, then there is time for it to load by the time users start to scroll and general speed score will not be affected. The same also goes for special effects, third-party apps and iframes. Although they might make your website nicer, use too many and the website will take a lot more time to load. Then another issue is cache content. And we're going to go to the screen immediately to, to see a bit about that. Caching is a process that uses a high speed data storage layers in order to access the content of a page more quickly. Your website content can be saved as static content in a cache. This will also mean, depending on how the cache is set, that users may see the cached version of your page instead of the live one. If you make updates and edits often to a page, then overusing cache is risky. But especially for pages that don't change all that often, like a static homepage for example, cache is a great speed booster. Here you can see exactly how to use cache if you own a Wix website. To enable caching, go to your editor, click menus and pages, hover over the relevant page and click the show more icon. Then click settings, and then advanced settings, and go to manually control caching for this page and change the toggle to enable it. Now the cache will be enabled. Select how often you want to reset this page's cache. Then again, if you go back, you can disable it and your page will not be cached at all. For other web builders, your best bet is to install a plugin or an app that solves caching and other speed issues for you. Here you can see an extensive list of such plugins for WordPress for one. Pick one and follow the instructions. It should be relatively easy and the plugin will do the whole caching thing for you. There are of course other speed factors that you can't do anything about. If your site is hosted on a slow server, 
It only depends on your provider to make it better. If you are not self-hosted and your web builder also provides hosting for your websites, you shouldn't worry. For example, Wix sites are hosted by Wix themselves and the low speed is very, very good.